The original version of this video was uploaded to Jason Verney's YouTube channel, where it and many other videos, podcasts, snippets and films can be found. That channel can be found at youtube.com forward slash Jason Verney. Previously on the Not So Korean podcast, featuring Eugene Kim. Why did you decide on that name? Was it was there a couple of choices? Or yeah, did what, you go what does that? the name mean? Actually, Nabila, yeah, I, I actually know that there is a Korean drama called Nabilera. It's the same title. This is just a quick note to say that although you may have heard in the last episode that Nabilera is from a poem by Jung Chi Yong, it is actually by Cho Chi Hoon. Excuse my pronunciation, though. <laughs> and as Eugene goes on to say. That poem is called Singmu, which I believe is also known as the Nun's Dance. And now let's go back to Eugene Kim. Nabilera is a phrase from a, a poem, and the poem is called Singmu. That's the title. So it's a very famous uh, phrase, and I think most Koreans know the phrase Nabilera. Nabilera means kind of um, you you blow something away. But it's it's very beautiful term. It's very artistic term of blow away or fly away. Welcome to the Not So Korean podcast. Before we start this episode of the No So Copo and part two of our interview with Eugene Kim, we'll just play about three and a half minutes from part one, a selection of snippets, call it. The three of us talked about so much in part one. But these few minutes will give you a flavour for the conversation as a whole. Enjoy. So maybe first of all, can you just introduce yourself and what you do these days? Yes. So my name is Eugene Kim. And I'm a translator and I'm a Korean teacher. And also I'm a PhD candidate in English literature at Kingston University. I'm also a mother. Um, I've been living in the UK for about 10 years now. Yeah, well, I was curious what differences you found between living in Canada and the UK. Were there any major like cultural differences? Or... So I, I imagine, yeah. for example, you would buy trainers here, but sneakers in America. We have two. Yes, so, yes, the vocabularies and also um, the Tim Hortons yeah. and the Costa here. So the two different coffee shops. Right. Yeah, obviously you, you started this journal of Korean literature uh, called yeah. Navalera, which is on, online only, I believe. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so could you tell us how that started and, and why you wanted to do it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I first started as a reviewer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have some experience when I first started my career as a translator, because uh, even though I'm Korean, I cannot say that I'm an expert in Korean literature. I wanted to know the trend and I wanted to know um, the what the foreign readers are interested in. Yes, for example, we we are translating a writer, Kim Mella. In this in the future issue, and Kimela, she's a new writer. She writes about queerness. I see this trajectory. I, I see this kind of pathway uh, of the drama fans. They're slowly moving towards literature because it kind of makes sense, you know. Yeah. Mm, when you yeah. become interested in a certain medium and a content, you want to develop the taste and you want to explore more. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then you have, I guess, you have the Korean films. Some of them are based on books. And I mean, yeah. the drama, yeah. oh, I don't know. Yes. Of, I yes, wonder exactly. if they go there because they've seen that and they want to know more about the writing. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe you could briefly mention the novel that we're working on, oh, yeah. or that we were working. Well, we're still. Oh yes, that it, novel. It, yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is, uh, uh, yeah, Sonkaraki Kanju Kanju, and or in English, my itchy middle finger, uh, yeah. by Kang Byung Yung. Yeah. So the author Kang Byung Yung Sonsengim and I, we 
knew each other mm -hmm. before he published their Songkaragi Kanji Kanji. The topic is also about the queerness if mm -hmm. we interpret the book or in that gen way. Gender so, issues as well, right? It is an issue. And I think the cover is also there are there are hints, the color of yes, the com colors. Yes. Like a literal translation, sometimes it doesn't make sense. And even though it makes sense, it's not fun sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you have this urge to create something more. Sometimes you have this urge to edit. Sometimes you have the urge to just take a whole bit out. Mm -hmm. But then you're not sure because you're a translator. This is the No So Co Po with Jay and Tim. I am Jason Burney and he is Timothy Holm. You'll actually hear Tim in a minute or two in this episode of the Not So Korean podcast. As you probably know, and as we always say, um, we usually record this live in UK's Korea town itself. That's an area in and around New Morden. That's the largest Korea town and Korean community in Europe. Well, this episode's no different. Myself and Tim in New Morden, Korea town. Eugene Kim is a translator and language tutor and someone Tim has collaborated with before and someone we've both got to know over the last couple of years or so. So here we go, the interview with myself and Tim and Eugene Kim. And just lastly, before I get off this subject and then I'll let Jason ask some more questions, but uh, do you have any... Um, advice for people who maybe want to become a literary translator like from Korean to English and do you think it is actually you know a um, uh, sustainable job <laughs> or career and, and I wonder if you different advice to what Tim has <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um to be a translator you just have to become a reader first mm -hmm. Because uh, if you don't read a lot, you don't you don't have your own voice. And uh, translation eventually, it's about the nuance, I think. Mm -hmm. So to deliver the right tone to the reader and to deliver what you think and what you feel as an agent of the writer to the reader. Yeah. And to do that, you have to become the reader of that original work and you just have to read other novels and other voices so that you can situate this work that you're translating amongst those other works. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoy reading and if you want to become creative while being faithful to the original writing, then maybe being a translator could be your vocation. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it's not a cushy job. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of time investment and also lots of patience. But if you have passion and if you if you are, you know, if you are diligent, if you know how to uh, run your routine, and then you can enjoy your job as a translator. Mm, I think I've been living as a translator be purely because of my passion, I think. Mm -hmm. Because in terms of reality, it's not it's not really a uh, sustainable mm -hmm. job. Yeah. Mm, it's hard to describe, but it it is. Especially because nowadays you have this AI translator, so yeah. maybe the whole industry is under crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet, but it will probably. Yeah. Do you Still, worry about that? Like in the future, that that. Uh, you know, there won't be any place for a translator anymore. And maybe we'll just all become editors or <laughs> readers or something. Yeah. I I still have a faith in literary translation. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the robots can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I still have the faith in literature and art. Mm. But maybe the technical translation and the other fields that require translation 
they would they i don't know some of the task most of the task maybe they can be replaced with a machine right. translator yeah 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 um i don't know what do you think yeah it's hard to say um i mean they there there's this phrase or that um if you give monkeys enough time eventually they'll write the complete works of shakespeare but i i yeah. never believe that yeah, that's possible <laughs> so to me, yeah, I don't think that AI could ever, you know, replace a human completely in translating a novel. But I don't know. Because they, yeah. they also mm. have to know the cultural differences, wouldn't they, as well? Because mm. even if yes. they think, yeah. they, think yeah. they put it, there's right. so much right. in Korean right. culture. Right. Right. Yeah. Hmm. That's a great comparison. The monkey, it's <laughs> here. Yeah. 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 yeah, I agree. Yes. Because, um, you know, usually when a machine re machine replaces a human job, yeah. machine does the job and human becomes a manager. Yeah. That's how it works usually. But yeah. I don't think that applies to translation. Yeah. Even though we should accept the flow of the machine eventually, I think we should do the base work. We should do the translation. And then maybe machine can comment yeah. something, yeah. but yeah. then we still have our authority to say mm. yes or no. Right. Mm. Yeah, that, that's my my imagination about the future. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Um, okay, so you mentioned earlier about um, the whole Hallyu mm -hmm. sort of wave and how, I can't remember what you, how you put it earlier, but you mentioned it was... Well, whether the literature is could be seen as a oh. part of the Korean wave or if it's sort of its, it's yeah. own thing. And so I, I was wondering, I mean, something I had a note about earlier was that I wonder if you'd seen much change in the last sort of uh, how many how many years you've been learning and before you could translate how you've seen the literary world change with regards to um the amount of novels that come out of Korea that get translated to English and also the techniques have they changed much in the time that you've been doing I know it's a, it's a while but <laughs> Um, I can I can comment a bit about the change in a style, maybe. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Um, the Korean literature, maybe it's marketing or maybe it's really a trend, but it's mm. it's becoming very fashionable and stylish, um, especially in the UK. I'm not sure about America and other countries, but in the UK, um, it's been regarded as a young voice. Okay. So... Um, we have some independent publishers that publish exclusively Korean novels and poems. And the book covers are so stylish. And also the content and the way the translators write and, uh, and translate the language is just so beautiful. Not just artistically, um, it's just something very different and even odd, but it makes sense. And they definitely deliver the Koreanness throughout the language choice. I think they're very skillful. Um, and also the readers, I think, uh, readers are also young, all because of this Netflix and all how you influence, I think. And, um, and um, the industry, in terms of industry, yes, it's becoming really large. Um, you remember like a few months ago, there is the Korean week, culture week, and there's a display in a foils bookshop. Mm -hmm. And I was so glad to find yeah, all so these. Many. Oh, yes. This is the middle of the London, you know. Um, so I, I really felt that, oh, this is now one of one of the you know world literature now. I mean, Korean literature has been one of the world literature, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's just the, the feeling that I get nowadays um, um, and also the exposure in the media and um, the, the, the events, the Korean author's book talk. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. I mean, even yeah. 10 years ago, obviously there weren't as many, so many books being translated. Yeah. That's what it felt like to me. But even you mentioned the covers, they weren't that... <laughs> Now they look like yeah, they were works of art. Very yeah. They were yeah. very bland before, yeah. very decorative, but they weren't very yeah. colourful. Yeah. Yeah. They've done yeah. some huge changes, nice. Yeah. I mean, yes, I should say in the past, 
but the Korean literature and the translation was quite scholarly, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So it was it was like related to the academia. It was a necessary work for academia, but now it really came into the popular culture. You see this YouTube video about Korean literature and the booktube about Korean literature. You didn't have that even like a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Can, uh, I, can I comment something? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 It's just my small anecdote. I mean, because <laughs> usually when I start the course in the beginning yeah. of the course, walk yeah. one week, I introduce myself to students. Yeah. And I usually introduce myself as a, as a person from somewhere from Seoul. Mm. I don't really mention my, my city name. Mm, really? But then the students really wanted to know the name of the city I came from. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, do you, do you really want to know? Do you think you will know the name? And then they say, oh, go on, go on. So I say, Incheon. And then they say, oh, I know the city. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, Incheon <laughs> Airport, right? <laughs> Well, not because of effort, effort. they know. just know it. Yeah, I yeah, think no. they saw it from a show or a drama. Yeah, maybe. Well. Yeah, yeah. I felt that oh, the change yeah. from the student response yeah. because right. somehow I'm I'm used to introduce myself as a person from Seoul because Seoul is the capital city. Right. But now I don't have to adjust myself. Yeah, you're in charge. I just you're have to be myself. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's. Yeah. So it was great. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you have other authors, Korean authors, who are doing well, like Han, Han Kang from Gwangju. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that maybe people are realizing there isn't just Seoul. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Yeah, because when you do a small talk with your with your friends at a party, you just say, "Oh, I'm from Seoul," and then that's it. Very easy. But yeah. now I don't do that anymore. I'm from Incheon, and then they sometimes like know, they sometimes don't know, and then I explain that Incheon is nearby Seoul and yes, blah blah blah. So, but <laughs> but, but it is a major city. I mean, I think I recently I heard I think it maybe even overtook Daegu as the third largest city in Korea or something like that. Like. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. It was the fourth largest, I think, and now it's the third largest, I think. Really? So it is growing. This is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this, is, this is what happens to me ever since <laughs> I came to the UK. Yeah. I get to hear about the Korean news from my foreign friends. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know much about yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, I, I mean, you have some of your students, have they actually been to Korea or you think they just heard about it from other, you know, mm -hmm. online yeah, some, of them, some of them, they've been to Korea and some of them, they're planning to go to Korea. Right, yeah. uh, so they, they take my course and then they apply for a study abroad program. Sometimes they just go for a holiday. Yeah. Sometimes they go for the postgraduate studies. They, they, they all have different objects, mm -hmm. objectives. Um, but maybe yes, because Incheon has a has an airport, so they know the Incheon because they always check the sky scanner and then they yeah. want to book a ticket. So maybe that's why they know Incheon. That's probably part of it, yeah. So well, yeah. Do you want to just say a little bit more about you or your class that you teach at Kingston University and how how that how you got involved with that as well? It's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. The class. Uh, is always full mm -hmm. and this year I'm offering level three so it, it's huge progress mm -hmm. considering that we started a course only three years ago um, so the the story of the Korean course at Kingston University is very Korean it, it resonates with the whole popularity of the Korean culture mm -hmm. because the course was not launched by the authority the course was launched by the demand of the students mm -hmm. the students wanted to have the course so they've been emailed to the director and then I was there I started first year full second year full this year also full and the participation rate is also very high yeah. mm, I know the language is not their like primary study subject because they're university student they they are busy with other things but then they're so anxious to catch up with the progress and they all have their aim after the course and um, so they um, they most of all they enjoy the course as it is and every every time they check their pronunciation and they ask oh 선생님 
I heard this speech from a drama. Mm-hmm. And then is this dialect or not? Oh, right. this trivial question. And then we talk about it for like, I don't know, half an hour. Yeah. And then sometimes we do a game. Like last week, we learned about the Korean numbers. Hana, two, three, net. And then I introduced them the Samnyukku game, the number game. Yes. And actually, the drinking game. You do yeah, it, drinking. then you drink. <laughs> so it's not a wholesome game. But <laughs> I think they learned about Korean language by playing the game. Yeah. And they loved it. So, And then also, kind of, I don't know. I think my job was to guide them. But somehow they guide me. I learned so much while studying with them. They tell me about K-dramas. They tell me about, you know, their life story, why they got interested in Korean stuff. And then it's so touching. And then I feel I have dignity mm. about myself as a Korean teacher. So it's been, it's been really great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you, I, I, we might have touched on this a little bit earlier, but the, the language you use, uh, obviously you learned American English yeah. and also Canadian English <laughs> and English English. Mm. Yeah. So do you, do you mix it up or do you have to, there's quite a few words that are very different in English to American. Or you use the Z instead of the S with organized. And, Mm -hmm. you know, do you find yourself mixing it up without realizing? I don't know. I think I'm just speaking a Korean English. (laughs) (laughs) And I I feel that my accent gets different depending on... depending on the person that I meet. So when I talk with Tim, Mm -hmm. then I feel like I'm talking... Canadian English. <laughs> yeah, but when you write it down, but when you write it down, how does your yeah. when you're trying to think of that right word? Like we said mm-hmm. earlier, sneakers. Mm-hmm. If you were translating yeah. a book in England, we wouldn't write that because it's uh, we don't yeah. we don't or, know what they are. Or you said yeah. you went to a petrol station in Canada, but we wouldn't say a petrol station in Canada. Yes, <laughs> yes. Ooh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I wondered how you oh. use that when you're writing a novel. Do you, sorry, not writing a novel, translating a novel. Oh, or anything, translate. Do you mm-hmm. think, ah, oh, that's not right because I know that's not right in English or I want to use the American term. So mm-hmm. how does that's that a good question. work? That's a good question because I am actually quite neutralized in here now. Yeah. So when I was translating the 손가락이 간지 간지, I struggled a bit and the team pointed that out because I I was using some British expressions and vocabularies and I was not aware of that. But the main character in the novel, that main character, the I, uh, is a baseball player. And obviously baseball is American and Canadian, the the American thing. So it would be suitable to use American English. And then I, I think things got very weird in, about my translation. I, I just didn't know <laughs> which yeah, direction that I should go. It was very mixed up. Yeah. And it was very, very weird, very awkward. So yeah. I was like, oh, oh, no, what should I do? Yeah. yeah, and the thing is we may have to change it depending on the publisher. Like if we are publishing it in the UK, true. we may have to change yeah. some things for, yeah. for the UK yeah. audience, right? So. Yeah. Do you, have you ever been approached to translate anything else, like subtitles for a film or something? Have you ever been asked to do stuff like that? Like, um, yeah. You know, you have. And have you ever yeah. done that for a short film or for some? Yes. So I, I've, um, I've translated the subtitles for short videos. Okay. And also the uh, media coverage before a publication. Mm-hmm. And I also do the translation from Korean to English, also English to Korean. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't done a film translation though. I'm interested. But I think that's also a challenging job because of the word limit. I I, did, I had a mid-length film that's been selected in a, a festival in Korea, and it's yeah. Korean, it's Korean and English. So I had a couple of my friends to mm-hmm. help translate the English to Korean, and yeah. I had to then look at it and see if it was correct. Oh, of course, my knowledge is nothing like Tim's, but yeah. I could, yeah. I could still see the end of the words. You know, the, the, the like you said, yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. 
no, I just, yeah, I just wondered. It's, it can't be, it's a very different ball game, but at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah ball game. That's American. You just have to be very precise to be a subtitle translator, I think. And you have to be witty yeah. to contain the nuance, yeah. you know, in a short frame. Yeah, yeah, you have to put it in one sentence or just yeah. you, you, could, you could ask Darcy Puckett. I know, I have, I have already. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, we you have. <laughs> Well, we, we, I, knew, I, I met him in 2012 when I interviewed him for yeah. a documentary that didn't get didn't see the light of day. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, he's obviously he's he's very good. He's you know, I mean, I guess he's very good because yeah. I never see the original, but yeah. I, I believe yeah. he's very good. I he's think. very good, but I think that he's very very busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm very busy. But he also works. He usually works with the directors quite closely. Yeah. So I'm sure yeah. he asks them lots of questions. Yeah. I'm not sure about yeah. things. Yeah. 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 All I was going to mention was about you have some similar interest to Colette Balmain, and you know. Yeah. Her. So, yeah. do you do you cross paths much? Like, do you chat at all, or do you? I remember once. We're, you, you, we're you, friends yes. now. We're almost like friends now. Yeah. We messaged la, uh, last night, even. Oh, nice. So yes, um, Colette is my mentor. I should say we are friends, colleague, and my teacher. She's my everything. Yeah. Um, we first met as a teacher and student. So when I first started my PhD, I was lonely, and I wanted to just talk to anyone about my project and about my difficulty about doing the PhD. So I just knocked on the door on the campus, and there was Colette. She or she was a teacher so she first read my writing and then I asked for feedback and then after she read my writing she asked um are you interested in gothic and then I said yes and then she said I'm I'm doing research about the horror films and then she turns out to be a film expert in Korean cinema yeah so that's how we got connected and we became sort of friends and now it's been like eight years Mm. and now i'm also a teacher and she's teacher um and i think it was the bts conference that kind of consolidated our relationship so when i was teaching just started a korean course colette began this big bts project Mm. and kingston university had opportunity to host the conference. It was a big conference. We yeah, had the scholars yeah. and the uh, people from everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then I was the committee. Colette invited me to join the committee. Um, and now we discuss about what we can do um, as a team and what we can contribute in academia. Yeah. And um, we are sort of very similar to each other. I mean, Colette studies about film and she's an expert in film, but she also studies about women's rights as well and uh, drama. So she's very expensive. Yes, and I'm yes. expensive too. I am English literature PhD student, yes. but I'm teaching Korean. I'm a translator. So I'm kind of, I'm, you know, I'm very expansive too. Yes. So we always have something to talk about. We have many shared realms. And this is, um, this is, sorry, one more thing. This is to do with Kingston itself. And obviously you and Colette, there's a Kingston connection. Yeah. But also, you mentioned the mental mental health. Um, mm-hmm. we, we talked about that earlier, but also there's, we, we interviewed a woman from Mind in Kingston. Do you know about them? Yeah. They mm-hmm. specialize in obviously people with mental health issues, but also mm-hmm. they 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 actually target as well the Korean community mm-hmm. because, like you said yeah. earlier, they don't necessarily want to admit is it admit admit that there's you know they've got social they've got a mental health issue or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you aware of uh, Mind in Kingston, or do you know much about their work? Yeah, I've heard of it. I've heard of it, but I didn't know that uh, the the Korean community. Yeah, they've um, got a lot of their signage is written in Hangul in Korean because they want to. Really, oh, yeah. I didn't know about that. Yeah, they oh, okay. we only found that out yeah. at the festival a few months back. They were looking for some Korean volunteers to work for them, and yeah. then we met one lady, a Korean lady, a couple yeah. of days ago, who who is doing some volunteer work for them now. Yeah. Oh yeah, we were at the Sewol yeah. um, demonstration. Mm-hmm. No, I just wondered. Yeah. So, um, yeah. and the other thing was, I know you mentioned your child. Obviously, we know mm-hmm. you've got your baby, but. Yeah. 
are you because obviously it's quite hard work translating when she gets older you're obviously going to try and dissuade her from doing translating (laughs) would you be quite encouraging towards her I don't know (laughs) I think I would I would encourage her to become a translator if she want to yeah yeah yeah. it's a rewarding job even though it's it's a challenging job Mm. she's going to learn Korean as a normal language yeah yes yes yeah I mean she because because she has a Korean parents you know yeah that that makes sense yeah yeah, if she wants to become a translator why not (laughs) yeah Mm, you don't you don't just live for money you also live for a meaning of life and I think working working in literature is such a rewarding thing to do yeah yeah it's like with me with my video projects and other stuff we do. It's not for the money, you know. We do it out of passion, mm-hmm. you know. Even this podcast, I think money, money, money follows if uh-huh. you really enjoy right. it. Yeah, yeah eventually mm-hmm. it might follow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We started this yeah. podcast out of passion for Korean culture, you know. Yeah. So it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, well, yeah, I was just curious, like, <laughs> how was it to? you know, give birth to a baby during a pandemic and raising a child in a pandemic, you know, in the UK, a country which is not your home country either. So that must have been quite challenging mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. It's a challenge, but I, I enjoyed it, actually. Yeah. I think because I'm, I'm naturally a positive person. Right. 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 Um, yeah, because, because of the pandemic, I could spend the time with my husband so that was a good thing. Yeah. And because of the pandemic, I could use a um, big room on my own yeah. at the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> so that was also a good thing. And um, because of the pandemic, I I could be careful, you mm. know, if it makes sense. Mm. Um, and the pregnancy itself was a bit difficult because mm. your body changes. Right. Well, I don't think... The pandemic had added a challenge on top of it. All right. And then it was pandemic, but pregnancy was hard. Yeah. But giving birth was also it was it was um very mysterious, amazing experience. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, pregnancy was harder than giving birth. Yeah. So whenever my friends tell me that oh, I'm so scared of giving birth, and I think I, I say it's <laughs> it's okay. It yeah. doesn't last more than a day. Yeah. It yeah. goes away eventually. Yeah, the pregnancy lasts months. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. but it's still yeah. very painful. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. After ten years, I I have my baby now. Uh-huh. I've never imagined myself being a mother living in the UK with my child. Right. Um. Yeah. Sometimes it's very surreal, yeah. but I see myself as a mother now. Whenever I make mistake and whenever I'm sleep deprived. I feel that oh I'm a mother now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well we we is that pretty much yeah. it, isn't it? We really appreciate your time because yeah. we know that this is, this has been really difficult to fit in. Mm-hmm. No. Your other work. Yeah. So. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I think I rambled a lot. No, 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 no. Because, it's good. Yeah. Less for us to talk. Yeah, we had a lot, we had a lot of questions. We probably have other ones, but I mean I mean I've been getting used to the, the KCC have been having these um book um re- yeah, book nights but yeah, they've been at, at home yeah. like zoom calls but yeah. because of that i've been sent a, a few books i would never have read before so yeah. i'm i'm grateful for the pandemic you know like mm-hmm. there was that the warmest that really dark depressing one mm-hmm. <laughs> which was uh, oh to the to the warmest sun or something yeah to the warm uh, to the warm to, mm, okay to the yeah. uh, i can't remember what it's called but and also grass to a warmer like, sun Maybe something comfort, like that the comfort yeah. women yeah. grass yeah. as well grass yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm just grateful, mm-hmm. you know, for things like that, because mm-hmm. in the past, literature has been put to one side for me. I, I still read some Korean literature, uh, English, mm-hmm. English translation. Mm-hmm. But I mm-hmm. focus more on films and other stuff. But I'm, you know, yeah. it's... Uh, are, are you reading yeah. any Korean literature these days or do you have any recommendations you could uh, mm-hmm. give our, our our viewers or listeners? Yeah. That the Kim Chuop essay is really great. Mm-hmm. I'm reading in Korean, but I'm sure it will be published in the future, in the near future. Yeah. So Kim Chuop essay, uh, titled "Cyborg Ateda," so English translation would be "Becoming a Cyborg." Okay. It's about disability, and the author she has a minor disability. She needs a hearing aid, mm-hmm. and then she 
she writes about what it means to live as a, this this a disabled person in a Korean society. But it's not a sentimental essay. She also she's a very intelligent person. So she kind of explores all this. Um, the uh, she explores the what is it like an or or organism. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. a biological biological yeah. working of the body right. when you have the hearing disability yeah. Yeah. and it's just it's just very well written essay mm. 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 and I think it's time that not just fiction also non-fiction yeah. should be introduced right right, mm. right. Yeah, okay. yes yeah yeah mm -hmm. I agree with that I mean I'd like to see there's a lot of like travel essays written in Korean but they, they're never translated to English but I think I always think that's an in, it would be an interesting perspective to see how yeah. someone else looks at you know another country or even like the UK or something. You know? Yeah. It's frozen. Oh, frozen. Can, you hear, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, there's a Zoom gap. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry, I don't know what it was, whether it's. Yeah. Or... Anyway, uh, internet connection is yeah, unstable. We do okay, get that so, here. Yeah. yeah, we'll probably have to wrap it up now, but uh, that's a signal, I guess. But anyway, yeah, we'll also see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much for this thank interview, you. Eugene, and I uh, hope to talk to you again no soon. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. We'll be yes, here. Yes, I'll message you about the translation. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let us know. Okay. We'll keep yeah. in touch. All right. Yes, we'll keep. Give our best to your family. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Yes, I will. Bye bye. 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 <laughs>